So if you define uh, Newton's third law, right, um, many people define it as uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. But we cannot say such a simple definition anymore. We have to put the complete definition, which is when two bodies interact, they exert equal and opposite forces on one another. Now what does it mean by two bodies interacting? Do they have to touch for them to interact? That's the question. Now they don't have to. Give an example, uh, if you place two magnets close to each other, you can you feel a force between them? That is interaction really. So you don't even have to touch one, you understand? Uh? So it's not necessarily or oh, the two magnets touch them in their force. Or for example, we are standing on the floor, then only we interact with the earth. No, if you jump off the building, so you are, you are free fall, but you are still interacting with the earth. Why? Because the reason you are falling is because the earth is pulling you. So therefore, according to Newton's third law, there's interaction. So therefore, according to Newton's third law, you also must be pulling the earth in the opposite direction. That's what it means. Okay, now, so when two bodies interact, they exert equal and opposite forces over one another. So Newton's third law tells you that the two forces that act on each other must be opposite direction, equal magnitude, but must be acting on opposite bodies. So many people don't understand the term opposite bodies. Lah. For example, if you are jumping off the building, so when you have a weight, that means you are free fall, right? Why you fall downwards? Because the earth is pulling you down. According to Newton's third law, you must pull the earth with exact same force but upwards. Understand? Not? So the force that you draw must be the opposite bodies. Lah. Example, lah, I give you the story about the farmer and the donkey. Okay, now, one day there was a farmer who wanted to buy a new donkey. Lah. So this donkey, um, he had to buy cheap because he didn't have much money. So he went to the market, he saw this uh, a donkey that he wanted to buy. So it was selling very cheap, but he was very suspicious uh, because usually anything that's cheap is very suspicious. Right? Uh, so he asked the, the, the seller, uh, why are you selling this donkey so cheap? Because I look at it, check physically, there's nothing wrong. Then the seller said, this donkey knows a bit of physics. So you want him to do any work, you must know your physics really well. That's the problem. So the farmer said, I'm going to take a risk. So this is what he did. So he went, he bought this donkey anyway. So he went back home and then he um, they just quickly draw a donkey. Okay, just simply one, uh, a diagram of a donkey. So he loaded the cart uh, with stuff uh, that he wanted the donkey to pull to the field. Uh. So he told the donkey to pull to the field. Then the donkey said, what you asked me to do is impossible according to Newton's third law. Because if I pull the cart with 100 Newtons, then Newton's third law says the cart will pull me back with 100 Newtons. So what is the net force? Zero. Zero so it won't move. Then the farmer said, why don't you pull harder with 200 Newtons? Then the donkey said, then you don't understand Newton's third law because then the cart will pull me back also with 200 newtons, so the net force will still be zero. So no matter what I will do, this card won't move. So why bother? So what is the problem with this argument? Because if you don't um, answer it correctly, I mean, if you don't know what's wrong, that means the donkey has won. <laughs> He's smarter than you. Okay, so what is wrong with the argument here? Is there anything wrong with this argument? Obviously there is, right? but what is the uh, what is the, the, the problem with this argument? So, why is this a wrong application? Because we did not follow this acting on opposite bodies. What we drew was, we drew the action-reaction force on the same body. That means we are taking the donkey and the cart as one single body and we drew the two forces on the same body, which is wrong. That's the wrong way of applying Newton's third law. What you have to do to apply Newton's third law is to draw the two bodies separately. That means first you're going to draw the donkey. Okay. Then you're going to draw the cart. For the for the cart, he, uh, the cart will feel the force of 100 newtons. So according to Newton's third law, since the donkey is pulling the cart with 100 newtons, the cart must pull the donkey 100 newtons. 100 newtons. So therefore, the donkey feels the force 100 newtons this way. So, therefore, if we draw on different bodies, this and this, can they cancel each other? No. That's why it doesn't cancel each other. 
So whether the cart moves or not depends on whether it overcomes the frictional force at the wheel. If it's bigger than frictional force, then it moves on. That's it. So it doesn't have to cancel each other right now. So that is what I want to tell you. When you, are, you, when you want to draw Newton's third law, you have to make sure that the two forces are not drawn on the same body. Okay? Another example. Now, another common um, type of question is like this. Let's say you have a table and then you have a block of wood on the table. And since the block is at rest, we will say that the weight acting on the, on the block is equal to the normal reaction force by the table on the block. Right? That's why it's stationary. Ma. So magnitude-wise, is the normal and the weight the same? Yes? yes? Are they in opposite directions? Yes. Are they on opposite bodies? Hmm. So is this Newton's third law? So I'm asking you, is it on opposite bodies? Because you see, when I drew the weight of the block, the weight of the block is acting at which point? At the center of gravity or not? So that means it's the weight that the block feels. So it's the weight acting on the block. At the same time, the normal reaction force is by the table on the block, which is also on the block. So can you see these two forces are acting on the same body? So it is not Newton's third law. But people say, but, people say, but this is a common diagram, this is correct one. Now, this is not a wrong diagram if you are drawing a free body diagram. So this is a free body diagram but not an example of Newton's third law. Because this is a free body diagram means it is a diagram of the block with all the, force act, all the forces acting on it. So that is a free body diagram. So what does the block feel? When you draw a free body diagram, what does the block feel? So if you are the block, you feel your own weight and you feel the normal. Yes, so you are balanced. So it's not wrong if you are drawing a free body. But if you are drawing Newton's third law, then it's wrong. Because Newton's third law, you have to separate the two forces. That means you separate them, you draw the block, and then you draw the table. The, the what do you call it? Uh, the table will feel the weight of the block downwards, right not? So the block will feel the normal reaction force upwards, right not? Uh, this is Newton's third law. Because there are two forces, equal magnitude, opposite direction, acting on opposite bodies. This is Newton's third law. But it doesn't tell you, this diagram here doesn't tell you whether the block is equilibrium or not. Because if you want to see whether the block is equilibrium, then you have to draw a free body diagram, which is this. You understand? Uh? Okay? So the difference uh, between Newton's third law and a free body diagram. Now, another example of Newton's third law is that, if I, uh, let's say you're, you're taking a hose, uh, and then you turn on the, 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 the pipe, uh, the faucet, uh, and then the water shoots out from the pipe. On the hose, huh? you feel a jerk backwards, right? Huh? So that is Newton's third law if you describe it correctly. So what uh, so who exerts the force on the water? The hose, right? Huh? So therefore, according to Newton's third law, what is the reaction force? It is what acting on what? Since it's the hose pushing the water forward, so Newton's third law says the water must push the hose. Backwards, so it's acting on opposite bodies. Understand not? All right, so that is Newton's third law. So uh, one example of the Newton uh, application of Newton's third law is when you have two objects uh, connected together, and then you apply a force on one object. For example, I'm pushing A with a force of twelve newtons, and A will in turn push B lah. And here the question says, what is the force that B exerts back on A? So you need to understand that if I am pushing A with 12, it does not mean that A will push B with 12. Because the force that applies 12 newtons is big enough to move both objects, but A in turn will only push B by itself. So the force that A exerts on B will surely be less than 12. So therefore, since A is pushing B, B will push back A according to Newton's third law with a force that is equal in magnitude but opposite direction. So, to solve questions like this, the first thing you should do is to combine both masses together, which is A and B. So, they told you A has a mass M and B is 3 times the mass, so it's 3M. Okay, they told you the mass of B is 3 times the mass of A. So, if I combine them together as one whole big body, this mass will be 4M. So, the force exerted on this whole big body is 12 newtons. 
So Newton, using Newton's second law, which is net force equals to ma, so it'd be 12 equals to 4m times a. <coughs> and then we make a as the subject. Then we have a choice to either take a or b as the subject. So if we take A as a subject, then you must draw a free body diagram, which means to say you must find all the forces acting on A, which is 12 newtons on the this side, and also the, the force that B pushes on A. So it's FBA. So the net force here will be 12 minus FBA, because it's opposite direction, equals to this mass M times the acceleration. But since the acceleration of both bodies will be the same because they're moving together, I can use the acceleration from here and substitute. So I will cancel off the M and I will get FBA as 9 newtons. So that is what they want, the force that B exerts on A. But the easier way is to find the other way, other side, which is B. Because for B, there will be, there'll be only one force acting, which is the force that A exerts on B. All right, B will not feel the 12 directly. It only feels the force that A exerts on B. So therefore, the net force is FAB. The mass is 3M times A. And A is the same throughout. So we can use back the A here and substitute inside here and you get the same answer. Can you see that? So, Smurf, Yi Tian. So which is easier to solve? The one on the left hand side, uh, which is uh, actually solving for A or solving for B. <laughs> right hand side. All right. So people said, but this is the force exerts uh, the force that A exerts on B. That one me they want me to find the force that B exerts on A, but it doesn't matter. They are all the same. Understand? Not? So if they ask you for the force that B exerts on A, you can find the force that A exerts on B. It's faster. All right. So that's how you solve it. And you'll notice that they are same magnitude because it obeys Newton's third law.